thing I started working with was that weird uh, slope that was dipping back this way and the one dipping this way. Um, so you can see I connected them in kind of a um, syncline. And the reason I did that is looking back at that map, these beds corresponded to something that was definitely a syncline or an anticline depending on the age of the bed. Uh, but here we know it's a syncline. So we've got this thing wrapping around and really what I should anticipate is to see something kind of the opposite having on the other side. So I'm going to go back to, the, to this, work a little bit more and we'll see if that happens. Okay, so based on um, the way that this map looked, I thought um, we're going to end up having some kind of paired syncline anticline. So after I drew this, I said, okay, I've got a yellow over here and a yellow over here, um, and I need to somehow connect those. So go like that, and then I can't have a gap down here, so I need to continue this bed down um, with these beds that are like it. Now this one is a dark yellow bed. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same kind of yellow bed as this, and so what may be happening is that there's some kind of a, a, of a thrust fault here, and that this yellow bed was actually connected to this one, but I can't tell on the map if that's the same color. You guys will be able to tell on yours. Um, yours is better labeled than this one. Okay, so now I'm to the point where I need to start sketching in these other layers. And looking on this map, it looks like, you know, they're just kind of phasing out from the syncline anticline pair. So I've got a couple choices. I can just have them follow the rest of this pattern, or I could try something different. But, but when in doubt, if you don't have any extra information, you need to just allow the other beds to follow the bedding that you've already created. Okay, and then we don't really know what's going on down here. You can just kind of mark that black. So this is what's going on. I've tried to maintain bed thickness. I've obviously not done that in great in some places. And what it looks like is maybe we've got um, a pretty large uh, overturned anticline um, with some um, folds inside of it. Uh, and and then the next step would be to actually color this in and make sure it map matches the map colors. So to just remind you of everything we've done, um, the first thing we did was we looked at the map and we got a feel for what was going on, what we were going to see. Again, seeing the folds on the map. Um, and then we marked out the lines for our topographic profile. Once we had that, we sketched it in. We calculated our vertical exaggeration. And then we went back and we marked in our contacts, so that's how we got these color, um, these um, labels up here. And actually, once you color that, you'll erase all that stuff above it, and you'll just be left with your topo line and your stratigraphy. Um, then, after we did our contacts, we went back and we looked for our strike and dips. Again, before you turn this in, you're going to erase this, and you're going to fill this horizontal in with your horizontal scale. So you're going to mark that as 2,000 feet, 4,000 feet, dot, 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 across there. Um, and we made sure that we used these two formulas so that our dips were drawn in correctly, uh, drawn on our uh, profile correctly, I should say. And then we sketched in our uh, layering in a way that, our stratigraphy in a way that made sense. So again, we maintained bed thickness, we followed our strike and dip, we didn't leave any gaps, and we said that if, you know, we don't have any strike and dip information for a bed right next to a bed where we do, then they probably are going to follow each other um, and be parallel. All right, good luck.